So far, we've been looking at the electrolysis of molten electrolytes. Now, remember, in a previous video, I had said to you that molten electrolytes are binary compounds. So, a molten electrolyte contains only two ions. one cation and one anion okay so there are only two ions one cation which will get discharged at the cathode and one anion that will get discharged at the anode however what we're going to start looking at now is electrolysis of aqueous electrolytes An aqueous electrolyte is something that is dissolved in water. And if it is going to be dissolved in water, that means that there's going to be more than just two ions present. So, if we take an example... And the simplest example I can think of off the top of my head is electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate. And usually when you see questions about electrolysis of aqueous electrolytes, they'll also talk to you about the type of electrodes that you use in your electrolytic circuit whether the electrodes are graphite electrodes or whether they're made of some other material. And we'll see the reason for that later down the line. But for now, we're looking at the electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate. And if we want to specify, we can say using graphite electrodes. Okay? So, let's set up our electrolytic circuit and then we'll see if we can make sense of this process and look at the different types of questions that you can be asked. So, we have our electrodes, our graphite electrodes. Remember the long stroke is the positive terminal of the battery. The short stroke is the negative terminal of the battery. The electrode that is connected to the positive terminal is the positive electrode. And the electrode that's connected to the negative terminal is the negative electrode. Now you have your crucible. And inside your crucible, you're going to have your electrolyte. This time, the electrolyte is aqueous. It's dissolved in water. So notice there is no need for any heat at the bottom of the container. All right? We don't have to keep the thing molten in order for electricity to be conducted. So in our electrolyte, this is the key difference between electrolysis of molten electrolytes and electrolysis of aqueous electrolytes. In the electrolyte, there are two sets of ions at the cathode, well even before we get to the cathode, yeah, there are going to be two sets of ions you're going to have copper ions and sulfate ions from your copper sulfate. Remember the ions that make up copper sulfate are copper ions and sulfate ions. And because it's aqueous, you're also going to have water. And the ions that make up water 
are H plus ions and OH minus ions, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So, the difference between electrolysis of molten electrolytes where there is only one cation, one anion, one cation, one anion, and aqueous electrolytes is that there are two cations, two anions. This is key because what happens is that there is competition between the copper ion and the hydrogen ion to see which one is going to get discharged at the electrode. Likewise, there's competition between the sulfate ion and the hydroxide ion to see which one will get discharged at the electrode. So the the hydrogen cation, the copper cation, those two are going to compete at our cathode to see which one will get discharged. And the sulfate ion and the hydroxide ion are going to compete to see which one will get discharged at the anode. So the question is going to be, how are we going to know which ion will get discharged at a particular electrode. This is where we turn to the electrochemical series. That is what this table right here is called, the electrochemical series. And what it does is it tells us which ion will get discharged in preference to what if you look at it is almost almost like the reactivity series for metals there was no real reactivity series for non-metals but we have a mini electrochemical series for non-metals okay so how this works is that the ions that are at the top of the series are hard to discharge and the ions that are at the bottom are easier to discharge. So the further down the series you go, the easier you are to become discharged. Discharged. So if we look at the cations, you'll have potassium being the hardest to discharge and silver based on this little series being the easiest to discharge. So if you think about our example, if you think about our example where you have copper and hydrogen competing to see which one will become discharged, look at the positions of copper and hydrogen. Copper is lower in the series than hydrogen. So because it is lower in the series than hydrogen, it is easier to become discharged. In other words, it will become discharged in preference to the hydrogen. Okay? So at our cathode, what is going to get discharged? Our copper ions are going to become discharged. So this is what will win out in the competition. The copper is what is going to become discharged. Similarly, at the anode, you have competition between sulfate and hydroxide. Sulfate and hydroxide. So, check the series. Check the series for the anions. You see that sulfate is right up at the top and hydroxide is the absolute last one. So, hydroxide is much lower than sulfate, so hydroxide is what is going to become discharged in preference to the sulfate. The key thing to remember is, just like with reactivity series, the lower down the series you are, the, easy you, the easier you are to get displaced, just like that in the electrochemical series, 
the lower down the series you are, the easier it is for you to become discharged. So, for our example here, the hydroxide is what is going to become discharged. 